Hi, and welcome to another edition of the Highlander Highlights. I'm your host, Staff Sergeant Jared Simpkins. On this edition, we're going to take you to the Mathana province, where soldiers from 177th Armor Regiment are teaching Iraqi police drug identification. In the Dakar province, Highlander soldiers pull security for civil capacity missions, and Staff Sergeant Nicholas Derry takes us through a typical day on the road in southern Iraq. But first, four BCT leaders have been directly responsible for adjusting to the changing demands of the Advise and Assist Brigade. Here's more on how these young men and women make the AAB possible. The 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division is using versatile leaders to accomplish their Advise and Assist mission. Seasoned Highlander leaders use their experience to remain prepared for the challenges of the transitioning Iraqi environment. However, the brigade's new AAB concept breaks away from the traditional role of a full-spectrum combat unit. This concept demands adaptable leaders. Soldiers with combat skills demonstrate their flexibility by accomplishing civil capacity projects in southern Iraq. Sergeant First Class Daryl Walker, an artilleryman by trade, talks about challenges he faces as a civil capacity project manager. We're going into downtown, Army convoy, trying to get in to visit the contractor who's working in a limited amount of space. Uh, he can't even move big equipment in where he needs to work to build this uh, addition to the building. They're difficult tasks, but you know we adapt and, and we adjust and we do the missions that the Army needs us to do. Today's Highlander soldier can manage construction sites, train Iraqi security forces, provide security for reconstruction teams, and conduct close quarters combat. 4th Brigade's Command Sergeant Major Philip Handy tells us how his leaders make the AAB mission work. It was critical to have smart, adaptive leaders. In both environments, you need those, those type of leaders and soldiers, uh, particularly in this, in this mission, uh, because it's not kinetic. It takes uh, flexible, smart, adaptable leaders that can solve problems. Reporting for the 4th Brigade 1st Armor Division, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Jared Simpkins. Every show, we like to take a moment to hear from one of our Highlander Brigade senior leaders. Here's Command Sergeant Major Philip Pandy. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all of our family, friends, and our loved ones back home that continue to support our great organization. We can all be proud of our soldiers. They continue to do the tough job that we face every day in our battle space. Our brigade shares a first-class reputation, and all of this is possible with your support. Thank you all for continuing to support our Highlander team. Keep us all in your thoughts and your prayers. Thank you. One of the core concepts in the Advise and Assist Brigade is enabling our Iraqi partners with unit assets, whether it's using technology, tactical training, or sharing knowledge in the classroom. That's why when local Muthana police asked for drug identification classes, Steel Tigers Delta Company jumped on the opportunity. There's marijuana, cocaine, the Highlander Brigade recently held training courses with their Iraqi partners to combat drug trafficking in the Muthana province. 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division soldiers and Iraqi police participated in drug identification classes where attendees learned the impact of illegal drug trade in their communities. Lieutenant Fernando Garcia talks about how the courses got started. They've mentioned a growing drug problem and the difficulty that their shirta or their police have in identifying even basic drugs. So that combined, I think, will actually help to standardize a, a sort of process across the province, at least. 1st Battalion 77th Armor Soldiers followed with personnel searching techniques. Steel Tiger Military Police explained searching procedures used with a variety of possible suspects, from hostile scenarios to methods used to protect civil rights. These personnel right here are the checkpoint police, and they have a particularly hard job of clearing everything as it comes into Mathana province. They asked for this training specifically, so this is the first part of training that we're going to continue to do through the next weeks. We're trying to emphasize the train the trainer model that the U.S. Army works with, with the Iraqi police also. And that way, these personnel can go to their substations and train their own police. Reporting for the 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Jarrett Simpkins. Have you ever wondered what Iraq is like? Well, here's a chance to see for yourself as Staff Sergeant Nicholas Derry with the 229 Field Artillery takes you through a convoy in the Dakar province. Last deployment, we were uh, doing a lot of raids, kicking indoors still. Uh, we, can't, we didn't have to share the roads or anything like that. Now, this deployment, we're going to check on projects, you know, uh, public relations, uh, civil affairs, and we share the road and everything like 
that have kicked in. Any doors, IPs leaking from the front, POSA being in the rear. They come in this deployment telling us that these guys are going to lead from the front. They pretty much kept us away from danger. If there's something going on in Nazaria, they'll tell us, you know, if it's a lot of traffic going on, they'll go around the outskirts, but hey, no, there's a lot of traffic, we don't want to go through there. Uh, it won't be bad, it won't be good for the Humvees and stuff like that. Traffic's ridiculous. Um, people go in and out of different lanes without using the turn signals. Uh, we come across a couple accidents where just people just ran into each other. Propane tank left side. Going in the same direction, not even stopping, they just they just merge in with each other, and it, it's it's kind of it's horrible. It's really horrible. Orange container left side. They acknowledge that they'll look. Some people, some parts of the city, they'll wave. Other parts, we've got rocks thrown at us, bottles thrown at us. We had a bottle a couple weeks ago thrown at us. We're broken in the back of our truck, and they were trying to hit our gunner with it. Uh, propane tank left side. You'll see. You'll still see uh, uh, raw sewage coming out of the houses and into a creek for uh, some parts of the town. Uh, yeah, like you said, women work. You know, kids. Some kids won't have shoes and run around playing in rubble from, from earlier in the war and stuff like that. So uh, compared to the American cities, it's still probably 100, 200 years behind. You, you gotta be disciplined with it. Um, it's the NCOs and the veterans that step up. Let these, especially a lot of these new guys, hey, this is our mission. Our mission is security for our platoon. We are the security asset. But we're still we're still scanning, we're still looking. So we may smile and wave a little bit, but we're really, our eyes are going everywhere else. We'll let the PPOs and uh, the civil affairs and SIAPs do the rest, do their thing with the, the hearts and mind thing while we provide security. A local elementary school, a dairy factory, and a bridge connecting two communities divided by the Euphrates River. These are just part of the hundreds of projects the Highlander Brigade make possible. But the provincial reconstruction teams and the civil capacity teams wouldn't be able to do their job without security. 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division soldiers are pulling security to enable civil assistance missions in Iraq. The Highlander Brigade deploys soldiers with civil affairs, human terrain, and provincial reconstruction teams to secure sites where infrastructure projects are being developed. Project managers and civil capacity teams work with Iraqi contractors and council members, while Highlander soldiers ensure the safety of these meetings. Staff Sergeant Nicholas Derry talks about his responsibilities in the advise and assist mission. This is our mission, our mission is security for our platoon. We are the security asset. We got to maintain composure. We wear the sunglasses so we can always scan and still maintain a non-hostile uh, posture. We'll let the TPOs and uh, the civil affairs and SIAPs do the rest do their thing with the, the hearts and mind thing while we provide security. Muthana PRT member Kelly Cook talks about how the brigade's role is essential to her mission. So if we didn't have the support of the AAB and the PSD units, we would not be able to do our engagements. And without being able to have our engagements, we cannot do our job. So as I said, the support of the AAB is invaluable to PRT Muthana. The 4th Brigade 1st Armored Division is one of the first advise and assist brigades to be deployed in the Iraqi theater. Here, Highlander soldiers are breaking new ground in southern Iraq, while laying the foundation for future AAB brigades to build on. Reporting from Nazaria, Iraq, I'm Army Staff Sergeant Jarrett Simpkins. Well, that's going to wrap it up for this edition of the Highlander Highlights. We hope you enjoyed the program. And remember, for more news, photographs, and video of your Highlander soldier, visit our Brigade Facebook page at facebook.com slash 4BCT1AD. Until next time, I'm Staff Sergeant Jared Simpson. Hey, Master Sergeant Alvino Cuevas. I want to say hello to uh, my daughters in Florida, my wife in El Paso, and my family in San Antonio at the holidays. Hey, this is First Lieutenant Yu from Jihoon Yu um, from Class Hunter. Just wanted to wish everyone in Sierra Vista and Tucson a uh, happy holidays. Sergeant John Burrell, just want to say happy holidays to all of y'all. I miss y'all. Love each and every one of y'all. Baby, I'm coming home soon. Can't wait to get married.